Happy 105th day of quarantine. Well, it's not the actual number, it's more like the feel like number as all the days kind of blur together. We woke up this morning, <laughs> I almost said yesterday. <laughs> I woke up this morning and Emma asked if today was Sunday and it's, it's not Sunday. Um, actually, unless you're watching this on Sunday, then it's, then it's totally Sunday. Uh, but I was just taking some time to get some fresh air. I want to share some uh, encouragement with you as we're experiencing times that if it hasn't already, um, is likely to challenge us uh, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually as we kind of reach what feels like the edge of ourselves. And I was reminded of some of the encouragement uh, from Paul in his letter to the Philippians. Now Paul's practicing some social distancing as he's writing this letter from jail. And uh, the Philippians kind of checked in with them to see how he's doing and he writes this in response uh, to encourage them. And I feel like it's fitting for us now because as we reach these times where we again feel like we're hitting the edge of ourselves, what do we do in response? Now, the what do we do in response doesn't change um, regardless of the situation, but the how might. And so in this letter, Paul reminds the Philippians to rejoice in the Lord always. And it's actually something that he reminds them throughout the four chapters. But it's in chapter four where he says, rejoice in the Lord always. And he doesn't say it once, he says it twice. He says, again, I say rejoice. And it's this idea of celebrate God. Celebrate what Christ has done, not just on a cosmic scale, but on a personal level. Like how have you or how are you experiencing Jesus in this moment? And he continues to say, and let your gentleness be evident to all because the Lord is near. And even in this time, God is near, he's active, and he's doing things. And he says, don't be anxious about anything, but in every situation by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your heart and minds in Christ Jesus. And then he continues, he says, finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is pure, whatever is noble, whatever is true, whatever is right, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think on these things. Think on these things. And so in this time, I want to encourage you to take time to think about what is true, what is noble, what is pure, but not as a way of distracting us from what is, but as a way of reframing whatever is happening in the light of what is true about God and what is true about us. And as we do these things, um, invite the Holy Spirit to, to reframe this moment for you. Because it's not something we can do on our own, it's something that only God can do. We can try to think of these things, but only God can re restore and uh, kind of renovate our hearts. And he says, don't just think about it. Don't just leave it in thought. He says, whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put into practice and the God of peace will be with you. So put these things into practice as we continue to navigate these changing times and continue to pray for you, um, praying that the God of peace will guard your hearts in Christ Jesus and that you experience Him even in this moment. God bless.